Hey YouTube, today we're going to be looking at some of the worst fighting game takes of all time. <laughs> Thanks to this Twitter thread, what is the fighting game hot take that will have you locked up like this? Wait, he's not even tied up. Wait a second, he can just slip his arms out, bruh. But anyways, um, looking through some of these, you either have two, you have two types of uh, takes, right? These either are like a crazy take or a mild take. So let's anyways, let's take a look at some of those popular takes here. And we'll start with high level Guilty Gear Strive looks like this. It's one of the most upvoted posts here. You know, honestly, I kind of agree. Even if I play Guilty Gear Strive, I tried to get my wife to watch stuff like Marvel and like other games that have a lot of action. And she's just like, I just see pretty colors and like, I don't understand what's going on, right? So I feel like that's kind of the vibe that this is. Although, you know, I think games like Marvel or even like to the next level of this, but I, I can see where he's coming from. I think this is actually kind of a hot take. New characters better than returning favorites. I think you need a good mix of both. I actually think a, a lot of games don't have enough new characters, especially like Tekken 8. There's like one new character announced so far, right? As a son of the South American chick, right? But other than that, like they're all just returning characters. And to me, like I want newness. I, I actually kind of agree with this, but I think you, I think you need both, right? I think you need to return some of the some of the favorites as well. Yeah, MK1 not having anyone new is weird too. But I feel like at least MK1, they brought in characters from like obscure titles I've never heard of, right? Like they brought in like the PlayStation 2 characters that I've never played. So to me, it's like, it kind of looks new. That's not as bad as like Tekken 8, where you're just like, you're taking everyone from Tekken 7 and just like pouring them over. All right, what is this? Most people that dislike mirror matches just have an ego that hates the reality of having to go against someone else that could be better than them with their own character instead of viewing it as an opportunity to improve. I actually, I think this this is actually, this is worthy of a repost. I think this is spitting. To me, this is like kind of obvious. I personally love mirror matches, right? Because especially as someone that plays like a low tier character, like if I lose a mirror match with a low tier character, I cannot blame my character, right? <laughs> like I have to blame myself. Like to me, it's like the most introspective thing you can do. But but there are some people that like are super adamant about not playing mirror matches and i've just never got it but like i think this is like the best explanation i can find right uh i think it's just ironic we need to gatekeep more <laughs> I don't know. Check the comment. Let me down in the comments below. Do we need a gatekeep more? I, th I think there's already plenty of gatekeeping. To me, it's like fighting games are really cool. So like why gatekeep, right? To me, it's like make the barrier as low as possible. And the gatekeeping should be like eventually when you get to the highest level, that's where the difficulties come into play. Trying to push yourself against other people, not getting started in the first place. Grapplers should be good. Ah, uh, this is actually, you know what? I think this is like one of the actual hot takes here. There's a lot of people I see on timelines that say like grapplers should should be bad because it's it's bad for the game to be honest like i never really got that i guess that i guess the thing is like if a grappler is really good then people are gonna rage but people rage all the time right if the zoning's like jp's really good right and people rage all the time because the zoning's so good it, to me it's like it doesn't matter who's good personally my philosophy is like you just balance the game as well as you can and try to make the characters that are not super polarizing the best so you don't like create like some truly imbalanced matchups it's enough to the reset just like that i also think technical characters should be slightly better than the rest of the cast too because like you should be rewarded for investing your time into someone that takes a lot more skill to play that's probably like my hot take on this but not every technical character has to be strong though you should be rewarded for playing a technical character it doesn't mean they have to be like top tier it just means they like the most technical characters shouldn't be like bottom three i think strive does a very good example of this right like some of the most technical characters like zato asuka happy chaos like are very rewarding at the highest level all right anyways uh playing up character because they make you horny is cringe i mean i kind of eh, i'll keep my thoughts to myself for this one to me like i've actually seen some like super coomer shit that's like kind of weird bro like back when i used to play street fighter 4 i played jury and i'd be like the guy trying to like talk tech about jury and then like people would be posting like feet pics and like talking about what outfit looks best and i'm like bro i want to talk tech <laughs> like this is not the community I want to engage with, right? So like, I kind of see this aspect, right? But I think, I think, it, you know, as long as you like keep that kind of shit to yourself, like who gives a shit, right? All right. People are considerably better at fighting games right now than they ever were. I, I totally agree with this. This is facts. I think most people think this as well. I think old games, yeah, they're less accessible. There's less resources. The netcode was more trash. There's less people playing. All those like led to less skill in the games, I think. Yeah, I, I actually totally agree with this. I think in general, the more people you have playing the game, the harder it is to be better at the game because just like average of the comments, right? For example, Street Fighter 6 had like 7k 
it like it shattered Evo records, and I think it's just like it's no surprise that Street Fighter 6 is one of the most, if not the most, competitive game right now. So that's uh, I don't know how hot of a take this is, but I actually do know some like old heads that are like, well, back in my day, the games used to take skill, and I think it's like it's kind of cap. Every every game takes skill, right? All right, the amount of people that insidiously rope you into consoling them after a set is way too damn high. I just want to press buttons. Maybe don't place your entire self-worth on a video game. Yeah, this is so fucking true. It's funny because like, I don't think this is a hot take, but this is something no one talks about at all. There's people that I actually refuse to play because I know they'll just doom post after I beat their ass. I'm not gonna name names. The thing is, it doesn't hurt me when you doom. It like hurts yourself more, right? Like if you're saying I'm so trash after you lose, like bro, like take positive, like positively reinforce yourself to learn, not have this negative feeling every time you challenge yourself to to a set where you lose, right? Because like if you just doom after every challenge you take, like after a while you're not gonna want to challenge yourself. So like you're actually these people are like actually just fucking themselves. Asking for advice is uh, super good, actually. The main reason I do not give advice is because like some people actually take offense to me giving advice, right? Like I'll only give advice if someone asks and I'm more than happy to. I, I used to always give out advice after I played someone, but like I feel like too many people just like take as like demeaning or like people's egos are too fragile. So like I'll only give advice to someone asks. Yeah, that's that's something a good player should do is ask for advice after a set. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like. Don't beat their ass and then look at them and say any questions. <laughs> I actually want to talk about this. So this is this is kind of hot take. I think this is the hottest take I've seen. Majority of tournaments have no transparency in their seating process. Decisions like who goes in what pool are made by a TO with help of utterly biased friends. As a result, most events have no competitive integrity at all. I actually kind of want to talk about this maybe like another video i think i could make a whole video about this subscribe if you want to see that but tournaments get misseeded all the time right and especially in online tournaments like i mean we're playing for like a million bucks right now with Street Fighter 6 and like having the wrong kind of seating can literally be the difference between like hundreds of thousands of dollars to me it seems kind of weird that like the seating for stuff isn't like as transparent as it could be right obviously you have to make decisions on like who gets seated like i think random seating in general is pretty bad but at the same time like you can easily rig a bracket to have like all good matchups or like easily rig a bracket to like have weaker players in your path right really strong players sometimes just don't get seated and like fuck everything up and if you're spending like a thousand dollars to travel just to like get daigo's secret godlike cousin in your bracket like I, to me that's just it's kind of fucked up especially like as we keep up in production value i think seating has to get better all DLC should be free. Um, you know, I actually, I kind of agree with like, you should have like a trial mode DLC, maybe not in training mode, but like at least be able to do like the beginner trials or something. Like, I feel like that's good for business because like if you try out the character and you like him, you're more likely to buy them, right? But I think, <laughs> I don't think this is a hot take, right? Give me free shit. Yeah, that's not a hot take, bro. Oh, this is actually a fucking shitty take. I'm sorry, Scott. Scott, you're my boy, but this is a shitty ass take. You don't want to play Discord fighters because it's easier for you to assume whoever you encounter in ranked as an NPC and don't want to acknowledge your opponent's people. No, I actually want to play fighting games where I can just queue up and play someone, bro. The issue is like, I'll go into Discord and I'll ask for games and then like, I'll get like some bot that doesn't know how to play the fucking game. It's like, it's not even good practice at that point. And I gotta wait for it. Like, I, I love games that have a diverse play style or player base so i can actually play against like people my skill level uh being great at fighting games doesn't automatically make you a good game designer that would make competent changes to a game uh totally agree with this <laughs> especially when you see like top players in fight in uh street fighter 6 being like remove perfect parry and then you realize like if they remove perfect parry this game would totally be imbalanced because the game's balanced around perfect parry right like uh yeah totally agree with that all right shit i gotta play tournament anyways <laughs> I looks like we're out of hot takes anyways so this is the um this is the end of the video hope you guys enjoyed this um yeah a lot of hot takes I have my own opinions let me know what you guys think down in the comments below if you want me to farm Twitter for more content please like share and subscribe and wish me luck in this tournament all right y'all peace have a good one